Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Smith. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Coresight, and welcome to another week of Coresight's Business Unusual series. Um, as I mentioned, um, this is a series that we've been doing for the past several weeks, and the intent of this is really to provide short 30-minute segments um, every Friday that we can bring um, customers and, and business professionals together to really talk about some of the unique challenges that we're facing in today's um, environment, as well as um, talk about some unique ways that, that uh, customers and businesses are, are really evolving and, and seeing uh, ways to not only um, survive, but actually thrive through, through this environment. Um, and this week, we're, we're very fortunate to have Dr. David Ackerman with us, um, who's the, the chief digital officer for uh, one of the largest private universities in the country. Uh, NYU. So, um, Dr. David, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Maybe we could start off with, uh, you know, Chief Digital Officer is uh, is a big title and covers a lot of different areas, I'm sure, especially in higher ed and at NYU. Maybe you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, what that means as far as NYU is concerned. Yeah, so um, my area is really focused on, on research technology, but includes um, a unit in the library that's focused on digital preservation, a big unit focused on digital preservation, but also things like uh, high performance computing, uh, data services. We have a very large and sophisticated uh, 3D print operation. Um, but the, bi the biggest operation from, by far, at least from a standpoint of, of spend, is the uh, high performance computing. And that's, uh, you know, primarily uh, the um, what we're looking at our, our core site facility, we call it our research computing data center. Excellent. Well, you know, um, so, some stats that I've seen out there on, you know, higher ed in general and some of the disruption that COVID is, has really had on it with over 14 million students impacted, over 6,900 um, educational organizations that are, have been impacted just in the college and university segment. Um, you know, there's a lot that's been happening here, and I would um, I would encourage you know any of our viewers out there that if you do have any questions as we go through this segment, um, or even after the segment, we'll give you an opportunity to respond. But there should be a, a question bar that you can click on at the bottom of the page, and we'll look to try to take some of those questions as we as we go through the panel here. Um, but there's obviously a lot going on as far as how technology is impacting today's environment, and I know NYU has been at the forefront um, even prior to. Um, this whole COVID event happening as far as leveraging technology and getting your students, um, you know, very much up to speed and being on the forefront of that technology in order to do research, as you mentioned, but also be ready to enter, you know, today's economy and, and be um, tomorrow's leaders. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the research piece of this and, and I guess the strategy behind it and really with the, some of the thought that went behind that. Right. Um, well, you know, the, but first of all, I just want to say that, that um, working with uh, Coresight during the uh, pandemic has been incredible. Um, I don't know if we'll have a chance later to show you some pictures of, of what's going on at Coresight, but, um, you know, the, um, the progress on our new research uh, high performance computing cluster continues every day thanks to uh, both to Coresight um, and also Lenovo, who, from whom we acquired the uh, supercomputer. Um, and, you know, I think both Coresight and Lenovo have been working so closely together and constantly, um, whereas I think the tendency for most projects is to kind of pause during the pandemic. Um, we've been going full steam ahead, in fact, I told a funny story before to uh, to Steve about how um, one of the shipments was about ten thousand pounds worth of uh, computer got delivered days early, and and we you know we didn't have our white glove people there to take it off the truck, so we had to actually send them away and and have them come back on time. But progress w between Lenovo and Coreside has been just incredible, and you know that's all in support of our of our research and. A lot of our research has has turned into into COVID research, kind of uh, like that. 
Um, it's just unbelievable. I mean, my favorite example of the research that we do at NYU is this one uh, genomics uh, faculty who's um, studying the, the genome of rice. And the reason he's studying the genome of rice is that he wants that the world's gonna run out of, out of rice in the near future and not have enough to feed the world. Maybe there isn't already. And he's, he's studying the genome of rice to cure world hunger. And I always tell my staff, if you can't get up in the morning to support the guy who's trying to cure world hunger, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what. And now yeah. it's turned into cure. Well, it's not just cure, it's, it's, it's every aspect of COVID that you could think of and then 20 things that you'd never think of. Um, so it's the obvious things like analyzing the genome, um, determining, we actually determined at NYU where the virus came from. They thought it came from China. No, it came from Europe. How did we know that? Analyzing the genome on our computers, right? But then there's, a, of course, there's also research to, for a virus, extensive research, multiple people. Several of them have been on TV and they keep running on our computer and we, we're putting them all, all the COVID people go at the front of the line. Um, they don't wait in the queue anymore. And, you know, we're hoping to get this new machine up at Coresight, which is gonna have probably 10 times the capacity. It's a um, 32,800 core machine that weighs 22,800 pounds and it's got several hundred GPUs. Um, It'll, it'll have a total capability of about four petaflops, four quadrillion calculations per second. And we're trying to get it up as fast as we can to get these COVID researchers more, more cycles. Um, but I started to say that, you know, so you've got the obvious um, genomics work on the virus. You've got the obvious um, work on producing a vaccine. You've got other work. We've got all our chemistry people, including our president of the university, looking at chemical uh, substances that can battle the virus. So you've got those three main, like kind of obvious things that you want to do with with a, with a pandemic. But then you've got sociologists studying stuff. Like for example, one one person is studying. Um, and by the way, there's over 200 faculty that are working on COVID research. And you know, you've got these some unobvious ones, like one is studying the, the traffic, the foot traffic on the streets of New York City during a pandemic. Hmm. And, and things like that, that have to do sure. with sociology and, and, and related stuff. And so it's, it's just, what's amazing to me, I, I, I've been, involved with research computing for a while, is how rapidly people adapted their research to have it COVID related. So for example, right now, there's a theory that the COVID virus um, ability to infect in a society is partly related to the uh, climate conditions. And so our Center for Atmosphere Ocean Science is, is starting to look at what does that mean? You know, is it is it air pollution? Um, does does that lead to pockets of of of, of places that have a high concentration of, of infection? Um, and you get the idea. So there's sure. all cross disciplinary things. It's not just you know the chem the chemistry people and the and the genomics people that are in. There's people from our social work school. Every school literally has COVID research going on. Well, that's amazing. You know, and I, I think a lot of people think of, um, you know, the research that goes on at colleges and universities is more academic, but these are real life practical research um, examples of where it's impacting today's society. I know that NYU has been in the news as of even late on some of the uh, promising um, outcomes that we're seeing as far as potential treatments and and vaccines and so forth. So it's it's pretty amazing. And uh, to your point earlier, um, this is not all happening either today or especially in the future on what you would consider consider a, a normal computer. The you know what you're looking at and in, um, installing at, at CoreSight is I think one of the the fastest um, 
supercomputers available on the market today, is it not? Well, it's definitely going to be on the top 500 list, pro probably somewhere around the middle. But what we're even more proud of is the fact that, um, well, these lists haven't come out, right? There's a few, there are a few weeks away, but we're going to be really uh, well positioned on what's called the green 500 list. And what the green 500 list measures is the number of flops per watt or alternately gigaflops per kilowatt. And our computer, one reason that it's going to be so green is that at CoreSight, we're, we're using a Lenovo for the compute part. We're using Lenovo direct water cooled uh, compute nodes. And what direct water cooled node is, which most people probably don't know, the water goes in the computer into each node. The water goes by the CPU, then it goes around, goes by the um, memory, then it goes by the disk. And basically the water will take out 95% of the heat. And we're talking about a lot of heat. This computer is, is, is probably going to total a, 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 in the neighborhood of 700 kilowatts. And so when you can take 95% of the heat and the water doesn't have to be cold. In fact, it can't be too cold. You, you don't really want it, but it can be actually pretty warm and it still takes the heat out because mm. it's so hot and the water is such a good conductor. Um, when you can when you can do that, the amount of uh, air conditioning that you need is is greatly reduced. And the, the the PUE, if people know what that is, on these nodes are practically perfect. They're 1.08, 1 being perfect, which means how much energy do you need besides the energy that you need to power the computer for the for other stuff? And you know, in our current computer room, there's a factor of two. So for every kilowatt of power you need, you need you need two kilowatts to get a kilowatt worth of power. In the CoreSight uh, room, the worst case, the worst case scenario in CoreSight's facility is one and a third, which means you only need a 30% extra amount of electricity. This is a very, very uh, uh, big factor that when you have large scale computing, you have to think about the electricity a lot. The other thing that we've got at, at CoreSight is we've got, we've got about eight cent electricity in the city, which is where we are now, we've got 15 cent electricity. So that 15 cent electricity, since you need a factor of two because of the uh, power utilization, it costs us 30 cents for a kilowatt of compute in the city, but 10 cents at core site. So that's kind of a dramatic savings when 15% of all the energy at our university is going towards our compute. So, you know, you lower the cost on that and you've really made uh, an impact. And it, it's really, it's it's thanks to CoreSight and it's thanks to Lenovo's, who's the only one, the only computer that you can buy that takes out 95% of the uh, heat. The competitors use this leaky system that only takes out 60% because it only goes by the processor. It doesn't, it ignores the heat from the disk and the memory. So again, you know, CoreSight has bent over backwards to build the water to bring to the computer. Uh, I mean, we were lucky the water wasn't, it was nearby, but they've, they've done this beautiful uh, engineering and you know, when you add the core side engineering to the Lenovo engineering, you really got something spectacular. Oh, that's great. I mean, I forget what you asked. No, that, that, that was perfect. You know, and I, and I think about, uh, most people think about um, computers and they don't think about water being in the same atmosphere as, uh, as uh, electronics or computers. But I gotta, uh, I gotta tell you something, you could have made a lot of money betting me that, that I'd be doing this, but. You know, because I always said uh, I'd never put any water near a computer, but Lenovo's using military grade hardware and there's no leaks. I mean, I check from people who have it. It just doesn't leak. The competitors have little leaks. Lenovo's got got no leaks. And 
you know, I actually went to the Lenovo guy, the, our, our great salesperson, and I said, you know, I, I want to do, everybody's going to have to do water cooling if you want the latest technology, by the way. Okay, I've seen some of the non-disclosable future Intel and AMD plans, and the chips are going to be too hot to cool with air. They're just not going to be coolable with air. You're going to, if you want the latest ones a couple of years down the road, you're going to have to water cool them. So I said to Lenovo, I said, look, I'm planning on doing water cooling. I know I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to replace this computer in four years. I'll do the water cooling in four years. And they said, wait, you have a new space here. Why are you waiting? And then I looked more deeply into it. And I found out that there really isn't a danger in putting this water. And, and believe me, I, I figured I'd be retired before I put water next to the computer, right? I mean, electricity and water, bad. But it, when you see the engineering of what Lenovo's done with this copper piping inside, it's it's just it's it's just beautifully engineered. And you know, we've checked with multiple customers, and nobody's ever had any issues with it. Um, That's great. You know, I think. Uh, so we, we've talked a little bit about, you know, the deployment and, you know, how uh, some of the potential cost savings that you're looking at from consolidating into the Corsair facility from a power perspective. There's clearly, you know, a lot of other aspects that went into that decision making. Um, I know you're also leveraging cloud as well, right? So this is uh, while well, you have a core um, supercomputer that you're working from, you're also leveraging um, a lot of the latest cloud technology. Can you talk a little bit about how that plays into the connectivity, I guess, back to the campus, what you're doing there, as well as um, cloud connectivity and how that played into the whole um, core side calculus there, I guess. Yeah, there, there's a couple of questions in there to answer. Um, there's a question about savings, a question about cloud. And um, let me start with uh, saying that we're, we have three data centers in Manhattan. They're very expensive. The real estate's expensive. I already detailed the electricity. Um, our new um, CIO um, decided we were moving to the cloud, basically, right? And um, so we've done an analysis of, of, um, of our applications. And some of them will move to the cloud. Many of them will move to the cloud, and some of them will move to the colo. And that could be a whole nother half an hour discussion about that decision tree. But I can tell you from the high performance computing, very simply, that the price of high performance computing in the cloud is an even factor of two more than on-prem in the colo. So literally twice the price. So that's one decision point, right? That's an obvious one. If something costs twice as much here as there, you're going to go there, right? And we're, go, and we're going there and we're going big. Um, there's other factors I'm not going to detail, but suffice it to say that we will end up out of Manhattan. So all of we will be out of Manhattan by, well, I'm not going to say by, but soon, soon, within a year or two. And... Um, so that's that's the, the cloud story. So it really is a hybrid story. And even, even the stuff that we have at CoreSight, CoreSight's working with us to get a direct connection to GCP, Google Cloud uh, provider, and we're going to be bursting into the Google Cloud. So even as much resource of, as we have at CoreSight, we're also going to be having a, a hybrid strategy for our high-performance computing with bursting high-performance computing uh, jobs. As far as the savings go, the savings, you know, it, it, the electricity is probably the second or third most important thing. Most important thing is, is the real estate, number one. You know, our, our, the person who's in charge of space at NYU has said to me, David, why are we using the most expensive real estate in the world to house our servers? And I'm like, I'm get, I'm, I'm working on it. You know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get them out. But so beyond that, when you look at, so I'm looking at decommissioning machine rooms at the same time as we're opening 
uh, course site. And what I'm finding is that NYU in its machine room, it's, it's amateur hour. I mean, no offense to the people who put that facility together because they did a great job. But when you compare it to what CoreSight has, it's, it, it's apples and oranges. I mean, when you look at CoreSight's handling of things like security is where it starts, right? Try getting into this facility. You're not getting in. I'm telling you, you can't get in. Not only can't you get in because you can't get through that first gate or the second gate, I should say, I think. But once you get in there, it's like a jail. It, at no offense, right? <laughs> Good. You right. go into this locked facility, this locked area, and the thing locks behind you. Now you can't get out. You also can't get in, right? You're in, the, <laughs> and then they open the next thing, and that, and you can get into that. And then, of course, there's security. At the, I mean, there's security at every level. It there's so much security that when you look at the security that you have, that you've put together, that you think is secure, it, it may be, but the security there is just, it's, it's, on another, it's on another level. The professionalism of how they run the place, you can eat off the floor. And um, even when they're doing construction, I don't think we're gonna have time to show pictures, but even, even while they're doing construction, the place, the place is super immaculate. And so you have, you know, you have security, you have the management, you know, I get these notices from CoreSight that, you know, CoreSight had, uh, I believe it was seven nines last year, which I think they- Eight nines had, actually. What? Eight nines. Eight nines, I'm sorry. I did yeah. I, I <laughs> out of a nine. And, and I believe I did the calculation on eight nines, it means three seconds of downtime, which basically means there were probably three blips where they went to, backup power or something and nobody even noticed because it was a second or less. So they're never down. You know, can you say that about your place? I doubt it. You know, you're down for maintenance, you're down for this, you're down for that. And when they're doing maintenance, which they're not down for, they send you this beautifully uh, formatted document that, that you look at it and you say, wow, that is a beautiful document. I mean, you might not even read it. It's so beautiful. But you know, nothing's going down. So why, why even read it? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, and you're getting all this at a, at a, at a lower price point. So, you know, why would you run your own data center in, 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 uh, 2020? I, I can't, I can't think of, of a single, uh, reason, honestly. So yeah, sure. so our strategy, it's a hybrid strategy. Some stuff goes, to yeah. the other stuff stays on prem in the colo. Yeah, as you as you so as you mentioned, um, you know that that hybrid approach and um, the super fast computer and systems that you're putting into our data center, um, it, it's only effective if people have access to it, right? So the connectivity um, back into that to ensure that the performance um, as you move out of Manhattan yeah. is still at the level that you expect it to be. Talk a little bit about how um, how that's working for you. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons that people like the genomics department keep their stuff on their floor is that our network, our regular network, NYU net, it's a, it's a general purpose carrier. And you know, one of the biggest things it carries is Netflix traffic. And it's not fast enough, frankly, to move these genome uh, data sets around. So departments are stuck keeping their machinery that's generating the data near the data storage. We're gonna fix that by building a high speed, low latency, dedicated research network, which is capable of 400 gigabits per second, but also multiple 400 gig gigabits per second. So we're still deciding how to talk about it. Is it is it something that has a throughput of 2.4 terabits per second or is it a 400 gigabit network? Whatever it is, it's way, way faster than what we've got and it's gonna be dedicated to research. So what does that mean? It means that when that genomics person generates a, a genome, they're gonna send it to CoreSight and it's gonna get there in seconds. And, um, and, 
I expect that all the local machine rooms, and there's 32 of them around NYU and Manhattan, um, one by one will decide that they want to move to to the colo. And, um, and in fact, the first department pretty much has decided chemistry um, is going to be the first department. And they're actually our biggest high performance computing um, user. And they have a they have a machine room on their floor that unfortunately they built recently, uh, but now they're doing, they're putting like wet labs and stuff on that floor. So they're going to move their, they're going to move their machinery to, um, to core site. And I think you're going to see over the next five years, pretty much all of the machine rooms um, on campus will, will, will decide to move or maybe even be mandated to move because of the electricity uh, uh, costs. Well, it sounds like a much more effective use of space, that's for sure, and how students can engage on hands-on, you know, type of activities versus compute. Um, you know, one of the things I was going to ask you, too, is as you think about um, putting all this together, this is obviously a, a very big project for you and NYU in general. Um, is there any partnerships that you worked with to, to help you through this and navigate um, where to go and how to deploy and so forth? Yeah, we... we um... And, and this is the way we selected, actually selected CoreSight. Uh, we were working with a company called EYP. Um, EYP had been a part of Hewlett Packard, and then they spun off into a separate company. And we've been working with them for over two years. And one of the big things that we did with EYP, and we're working with them today. I mean, I'm on calls with them all the time. Um, but they're experts in, um, in in machine rooms, and you know, even in CoreSight, they've run uh, you know fluid dynamic models to make sure that all of the air is going to be cool. Um, but the first thing that I did with EYP, they had actually been working um, with us before I got so heavily involved, and and what they were doing, they did a survey to discover our 32 machine rooms. Um, in an earlier version of our plan, we actually had a bigger plan and it was so big, the schools couldn't afford it. So we paired it back to where it is now, it's still big. And EYP went and looked at many colo providers, at least seven, and then we, um, narrowed it down to two. It was CoreSight and, and one other uh, um, place, which I won't name. Um, but we went to the other place and the other place looked great. And, I, and it was like, okay, done, we'll, we'll take this place. And then almost as an afterthought, somebody said, oh, we're going to course, we're going to CoreSight. I said, well, we already picked the other place. And he said, yeah, well, we just want to take a look. And um, like, you want to go? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. All right, I'll go. So we went to CoreSight and we were just completely blown away by the quality of the facility and the obvious um, enthusiasm of the personnel. And, you know, that's stayed true to this day that, you know, we just feel the um, professionalism and the care that we're being treated with there, you know, it's not, it's, you know, a piece of equipment comes in, it's like, well, that's not really in your contract to store that. It's like, don't worry, we'll figure out where to put it. You know, it's, it's really a true partnership in the sense that CoreSight knows what NYU wants to accomplish and they're helping us accomplish it. Oh, well, that's fantastic. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I, for EYP, um, by the way, ditto for EYP and Lena. Yeah, it really is a, you know, in this kind of project, it's always a partnership and uh, it really has been a, a great partnership so far. And I expect that to completely continue. And just to echo the uh, your sentiments around the Corsair personnel, I'm very fortunate to have just some of the, the best people on the planet uh, to work with. So it's it's great to see that showing up um, in the service for you. I know we've only got a, a few minutes left here, but um, any other, uh, I guess, as you think about higher ed and the direction of higher ed and some of the things that they're working through today, um, any other, I guess, closing comments or recommendations you might um, just put out there as far as higher ed is concerned and well, what right they now, should be considering? 
the big thing that we're all grappling with, including NYU, is, you know, do we go back to school? And right now, NYU is planning to hold classes in person in the fall. What does that mean? How do you achieve that? How do you test? How do you trace? How do you social distance? Um, and I think, you know, California schools have decided otherwise. I think, you know, California may still be on that kind of a curve with COVID, whereas New York is on that. So who knows, you know, we could, I could easily see the possibility of us going to a hybrid model where sure. people will come in person, but some people will choose to, to stay remote. Maybe they'll be in countries that they can't travel to the United States. And of course, the whole thing's very fluid and, and, and um, who knows where we'll be as, as a nation in September. Hopefully we'll be uh, free of the virus, but a lot of people don't think that that's true. So we need to be kind of very agile with our planning. But I can tell you this, the research stuff is going forward. We've never stopped and we never will. And um, we're gonna have this computer up this summer and, and there's gonna be research going on very shortly. Um, and we're gonna be battling that virus from the computer. So, you know, that feels good that we're able to participate and I hope, you know, our partners, EYP and Lenovo and Corsite all feel great about it as well. Yeah, well, we're, we're very excited about it. And I think, you know, all the things that you just mentioned, um, I think point to not only in, in higher ed, but really in inter any enterprise um, on how technology is gonna play an increasing role in everything that we do, um, whether it's distance learning, a hybrid model, research especially, um, but any kind of, um, you know, traditional enterprise, I think, is experiencing the same kind of thoughts as to how they evolve their business to be more effective. And I think technology is going to continue to play a role in that. I know we're out of time, but I know I also noticed that there's a some questions. Did we want to handle one or more? Sure. Um, okay. Let's see here. I think we talked about a few of these. Um, Let's see. I think we've got most of those on there, unless you see uh, any that you'd like to take there, Dave. No, no, I didn't. I didn't even. I just see the number of questions. I don't even. I didn't even read them. Uh, yeah, no. I think. I think we're good. I think we covered most of those. Um, okay, good. But I, I, I will say, uh, you know, it's first of all, thank you. Thank you for taking the time today and sharing um, kind of where NYU is and where you are with uh, with this whole journey. It is. A, it is a journey and. We are very appreciative of our, our partnership with NYU and you specifically. And, um, you know, we clearly are looking forward to doing whatever we can in our small part to assist in your research and in helping the world. And um, for any of the viewers out there, you will receive a, an email just um, with a way to engage back with us if you have any further questions. So we'll help you with, with those questions. Um, you'll also receive a, a gift card for, uh, for Starbucks to get you a cup of coffee. And uh, also just as a quick reminder that next week um, we'll have a, a similar type of session around cloud, cloud optimization with Groupware. So um, you know, we'll continue these series as long as you know, they're relevant to, to, uh, to the viewership out there. And if there's any suggestions, please uh, let us know that. There's one okay, question I would ask for email. My email is, feel free to email me at david at nyu.edu. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you again and uh, I'll, Please be safe out there and uh, thank you again for joining. Thanks, David.